Hello, Uyghur Beavers, and welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is a continuation of our series speaking to entrepreneurial immigrants headed to Canada. Today, we're going to be speaking to Dr. Shanaz Khan from Cape Town, South Africa. Dr. Khan has over 25 years of experience in dental practice here in South Africa, and she was recently accepted into Canada's startup visa program. She obtained her commitment certificate from PICAP, a designated organization and business incubator in Canada. She's truly excited as this has been a long-term goal for her to immigrate to Canada. In this episode, you're going to learn more about her journey and path, and even more so about her innovation. We hope you enjoy part one of our interview with Dr. Khan, as she's still in South Africa and will be heading to Canada later this year. Hi, Shanaz. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Excited for my move. Two weeks to go. How does it feel? How did you feel when you first got the news that you were going to Canada? Super excited. This is years in the making and thanks to you and your team, it's happening. I'm so excited. Shanaz, let's talk about your journey to Canada. I know we'll, we'll talk about the startup visa um, in a moment, but let's start talking about when this desire to go to Canada, how it came about and the early days when you were trying to come so um, I'm, I'm actually a dentist and I've been practicing for 27 years now. Um, and my brother lives in Canada, I've got extended family in Canada. And for the last, I should say about nine years, I've been trying to get to Canada, um, mainly to be with my brother and um, start life here with my kids. Um, because as the years go by, things are not, um, the situation in the country is really scaring me and I want to get them to a safe environment. So I started this journey in 2013, um, started with the express entry, I did the IELTS and everything else. Points were just because of my age, um, I just made the, the cutoff point, but I didn't um, didn't meet any of the draws. Tried that a couple of times, didn't work, um, tried other routes. And um, then last year, um, I was going to give it a one more chance and then your ad popped up on Facebook. Um, I clicked on the link and I made an appointment to, yeah, online appointment to speak to you and the rest is history. I am. Work visa in hand, <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> Talk to me about kind of your struggles early on getting to Canada. Like, what did you do right and what did you do wrong, do you think? I think I did everything right. I did the IELTS test, just my age and, and uh, was against me. And because I'm in a career um, day industry, we I can't work there as a dentist. I can't get a work permit. I can't get someone to to, to do an LMI for me or because I can't work there. I have to, actually have to go and study for two years to get a work permit, um, to get equivalency and write the exam. So. Um, I can't get in there um, with a job, so nobody can offer me a job because I don't have equivalency. So that was the first problem I had. So, you know, successful dentist in South Africa and I can't work in Canada and I can't get a job in Canada and I can't, nobody can offer me a job. So that was, what was, was my hurdle, really. There's no way that I, um, the only way I could get in was the express entry route. And as I got older, the points just got lower and lower, um, as you know. And then when I reached the age of, I think when I applied with you, I was 48 and it's like zero points for age then. Yeah, so there's no way I could get in that way. You're currently uh, a very prominent dentist in Cape Town, South Africa. Tell us like what's going on in, in the past with you, a little bit of history of yourself. I'm a very passionate dentist. I love what I do. Um, I still do. Um, but about a few years ago, I ventured in, I stumbled upon the, the field of airway health, which is also um, airway centric dentistry. So uh, we look at patients differently. So before we just to drill and fill teeth and fix smiles. Um, but now we, um, through airway health, I'm actually getting to the underlying cause of disease in kids and adults. You know, so you don't just have crooked teeth just because it's genetic. You know, the reason why you have crooked teeth is because you have oral dysfunction. And who better than dentists to identify this oral dysfunction, which is something we're not taught at dental school, not in any dental or medical curriculum. So I actually had to do the research, do the courses and, you know, get to the stage. And um, moving to Canada, um, it's, it's sort of a platform for me to actually learn more about airway health because North America is where everything happens. Um, there's lots of courses happening there, very little happening in South Africa. Uh, and also I can educate the people in Canada because they are um, not as, as far, you know, not as far ahead in the field as what the, the Americans are. Um, so um, that's how I stumbled across you and we on the SUV program. And yeah, here we are with the Airway Health Canada business. We talk about why you know we both of you and startup visa would be the best route for you. Firstly, because um, my age is against me. There's no way I can get anywhere, <laughs> anywhere else. I can't get a job from anybody. <laughs> this is the only other route, you know. And um, then we I also had to think out of the box because I'm a dentist with dental qualifications. What can, what can I offer Canada? You know, um, not being able to work there as a dentist. 
and um, we came up with something in medtech which is basically my airway health passion which is um, you know i'm totally um I'm over the moon with this, this project and and with your guidance and and the help of of Spycap and the team who helped me write, write my business plan as well as uh, develop the prototype i mean we've developed this amazing business you know and that's what got me into canada so would it be fair to say one of the motivations for the start of the program for you obviously there's an immigration component to it in that for airway health you need a bigger market for that a bigger share of market a bigger platform because i think it would be fair to say that airway health is in its infancy in the kind of industry definitely um there need be a lot a lot more awareness around this topic and um uh, i feel that you know we're like small fry in south africa um it's a little bit more um happening about it in, in the us in canada it's taking off a little bit more than south africa and also i'd like to 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 give a have a platform that we can go globally with, you know because i really feel that this is a global issue and um if we have enough people interested in know what's happening with, with regards to your children's airways your airways um you know we can make a big difference in people's lives we can change their lives for the better what's been your interaction with your, your designated organization i guess basically so if i can explain so my first meeting with you was in june i think of last year okay and then you explained what the issue of visa was and that I had to come up with an innovative idea and then we had to find someone to give me a commitment certificate we had to find an incubator then you introduced me to a few incubators and I had meetings with all of them and explained my you know business plan and um and pack up accepting me for the for incubator um and since um then uh, i had to do a uh, a business course to pack up um I had to develop a business plan I had to have a prototype um and you actually helped me find all these people um to network with um to make this a reality um so pycap is um yeah so they offered gave, uh, after um giving me my business plan and my prototype and having an interview with them i got the commitment certificate and that's what they sent along with our work permits to ircc and then yeah this this is true so this has been a almost a year long process now i know there was some yeah, delays 15 months it's 15 months and again it's just been delays in the system Not yes. really how the immigration system is supposed to work, but for any business immigrants out there, innovators, founders, when it specifically comes to start up visa program, what advice would you have for them? My the best advice is to go with the organization that knows what they're doing, which is like 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 you knew, because you can't do this alone. There's no way. There's no way I could have done this alone. Um, I could apply for the ex- express entry and everything else that I did before this. I could do that alone because everything was done online. But to find an incubator to get that business plan and you know to get that um, prototype up and running, I don't know anybody in Canada. You know, it would have been my take. Uh, maybe I could have done it on my own, but it would take me probably another ten years. <laughs> you know, but in, in the, the bigger scheme of things, fifteen months is not long to wait since I've been trying for the last ten years anyway. You know, so um, if I this has been my first attempt at trying, and it took me 15 months, it would have been brilliant. So to me, it seems like a longer process because I've been trying forever. But if I had just done this process in the beginning, I would have been there in 15 months, and you know, it wouldn't have been that much of an issue. You know? So let's talk about real life. You're you have a family, two children, a husband, um, and in two weeks you are picking your life up and you are going to Canada for a new life. Yes. Um, How is that going? Talk to us about that. Like this is a big move. Uh, everybody thinks we're crazy. They're like, how can you leave? You've got such a successful business, and you know, you got good life in South Africa, but we have a good life living behind walls. And I feel that my kids are really sheltered, and they've never got to live, you know. And when I visit my brother in Canada, and they can just go to the park on their own and do these things without me hovering, you know, being worried about their safety, it just makes you feel that they don't have a quality of life here, and that's what I want for them. I really want them to be able to get that independence which I don't think they'll get being behind gated walls and you know me constantly hovering and worrying about their safety. Um so I'm very excited for them, you know, to have a new start for me this will be a new adventure. You know, I'm very entrepreneurial and I can do anything. I know if I put my mind to it, I can, you know, make a success of anything. I just have to just keep my head around being in a colder country, colder colder climate because <laughs> Yeah. We live in the most beautiful city with the most beautiful weather and just the weather I have to get, get used to but other than that I, as long as my kids are safe and happy I'll be happy. So what are what are some of the things that that you're doing to get ready for this move? I know you've opened up bank accounts, you've booked your plane tickets, are, are you taking furniture, are the kids in school like talk to me about the checklist. 
a personal checklist is basically getting all our documents in order, which I got from you guys. <laughs> See that hold your hand through every stage. They even sent me a whole long list of what I need for, for, for immigration and I've got a flip file with everything in me. So I made sure that everything's in my flip file with the cop- amount of copies that I need. Um, so that's the thing with our passports and our visas in our passports. Um, so that's all the paperwork done. Um, we decided not to sell the house and put the furniture because my friend uh, wants to move in place furnished. Um, so she's renting from us. And um, so we just had to take our belongings, our personal belongings and my, dad, and my husband's bikes. So that's gone. It's been shipped already. Um, so now we just have our suitcases out there ready to be packed, you know, the last bits and bobs. Um, and yeah, so this, um, fortunate for me, I have a brother living there. He lives on his own. He's got a three bedroom house. Um, he wants us to live with him until we're on our feet. So yeah, so we're walking, well, you know, we're coming straight into a fully furnished house and we're going to be set up until we, he's got a car for us to lend as well. So we don't need anything at the moment when we, when we land. It definitely sounds to me that you're mentally prepared. And I know we've had conversations about this early on and, and we talked to business immigration um, clients and we talk about the two components. Obviously, you need the financial capacity to enter Canada as a business entre- entrepreneur, um, but you also need the desire. I think a big thing I've noticed with you and our other clients is that you're mentally prepared. It's almost you can see yourself in Canada. You know what your life's going to be, where the kids are going to be going to school, where your house is going to be. So can you talk about that thought process, being in the right frame of mind for this? Yeah, I think, um, you know, like, like when I speak to my friends, for example, and they're saying, because a lot of them know that I've been trying for years, you know, and then now it's eventually happened and they're like, oh my God, you know, you like never gave up. You know, and I think you need that tenacity. You need to, I mean, there's a, world, there's a way and you need to be mentally prepared. I'm not the type of person to, to um, I mean, I'm very driven, I'm very OCD. And if I, I fail at something, I'm going to try, try and try harder. You know, um, nobody's going to say, say no, I'm just going to get there. And I think you need that in this process because it's not, it's not an easy process and um, you have to have the right mindset because it's so easy just to give up. You know, you can say, oh, I have to put all this work into doing this business plan now. You know, uh, is it really worth it? You know, at the end of the day, trust me, it's worth it. You know, do what you, you need to do to get there. And if you go through an immigration company like Nicholas's um, you know, immigration, it's so much easier. You know, they literally hold your hand. They put you into contact with the right people to do the right tasks and to network. And you, you cannot do this on your own. What would you say was the most difficult part in the process when you started with Beaver overall? I actually don't think it was a difficult process. I think it was easier than any of the other processes that I did myself online. You know, because I didn't even I thought, have to do that part you, myself. I thought, you were gonna say, I thought you were gonna say the wait time. No, you know, I actually think that everything happens for a reason. Like I said, to, to me, the wait seems longer because I've been trying for 10 years. But 15 months is not a long time if you think of it. You know, from you know, from the inception of the thought and, 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 and having the meeting with you to the day we got our passport request, 15 months is actually not a long time, you know. Um, and I think it gave us enough time to wrap things up and, you know, get everybody mentally prepared. Um, I actually don't think, and it, just, it had nothing to do with you, just everything, everything to do with the, you know, what's the, the political climate and what's happening in, in Canada at the moment, why there were, there were delays. And no, I think this is the right time. We obviously want to speak to you once you've settled in Canada. And we want yeah. to get that, in, like your first impressions of crossing the border, having official status in Canada, that we want to follow up on the, on the business. But what, what are your last thoughts to anyone thinking of immigrating as a business immigrant? Do it. <laughs> Don't think twice about it. You know, if you go through a company like Beaver, you know, you have a very good chance of getting it and getting it right. First time. Yeah, so 15 months really is not a long time in the bigger picture. Um, just if you have, if you really want to be there, you can get there. And this is the way you can get there at my age, your age. Okay. Otherwise, you can try the express entry route, but if you're not, if you're younger than 40, you might stand a chance, but older than 40, um, I think this is the only other way. Well, Shanaz, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. I know you're flying out in about two or three weeks. Two weeks. With your family. 14 days. <laughs> you're fully packed. Yes. This is happening. Um, and we are going to talk to you in, well, you're in Canada. In about yes. a month, see how you settled there. Okay, sure. Morning. I'm looking so forward to so much. Got my snowsuit ready for me, and this, you know, the advantage of having family there, they've, they've kitted us out already <laughs> the day we arrive in case it's snowing, you know, so we sorted. So you might be seeing me in my snowsuit outside. Show you what the weather's like. <laughs> Thank you so much. Welcome.
Good luck, everybody. If you're thinking of applying, contact Viva Immigration. You won't regret it. Thanks, Nicholas and team. I really appreciate everything you've done for us. And we are truly grateful. Thank you. This concludes part one of our interview with Dr. Shanaz Khan as she continues her path towards immigrating to Canada. In our second interview, we will be joining Dr. Khan while she's settled in Toronto and working with her designated organization, PICAP. For more information on immigrating to Canada or the startup visa program, please be sure to contact us at info at beaverimmigration.com. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.